All right, here we are. Hello, hello, everybody. Misha Saffron here with guest Melody Long and um, live streaming currently in my private Facebook group, Authentic and Wholehearted Joy. If you are watching this on Facebook, please say hello. Please let us know who you are, where you are, what you're doing, how you're feeling. If you're listening to this in the podcast, please also say hello. If you are watching the replay, feel free to make comments below. Or um, if you're on YouTube replay, the watching that, you can also, I believe I have comments on for that. You can make comments or respond to any of the questions that I ask Melody. Um, I love for this to be an interactive interview. So you can listen to Melody's responses, but you also can hear the questions and respond to them um, either in your own mind and heart, or you can respond to them in the comments or the chat areas, but would love to hear from you. So I am a heartstring healer. I labeled myself that. And I will just say that to everybody. I'm very honest. I proclaim, I'm not Napoleon, but I self-proclaimed myself heartstring healer. I spent a lot of years tuning my own heartstrings and I love empowering women, both in the heterosexual and in the uh, queer communities to do the same um, so that we can all live wholeheartedly and live with authentic joy on a daily basis. And um, I started this podcast to originally it was passing joy around the world, which I'm doing, we're doing, but it's now also intertwined with this notion of coexistence of joy, pain, and talking about the truth of it all. So I'm super delighted to introduce and um, hold on. I've got this nifty slide that I'm going to share with you all um, with um, whoopsies. Let me just get into this. This is super exciting. I learned how to do this from my friend Renee. I'm going to share the screen and show everybody this beautiful picture of <gasps> Melody Long. <laughs> so we are here today and we are going to have this wonderful discussion about coexistence. And Melody, just want to share with you all, is a midwife for divorced women, helping women in the divorce process who lose themselves in a marriage and are looking for deeper life purpose and meaning to find their authentic selves so they can move forward in their life with courage, strength, and joy. And Melody believes, and I agree with you, that the best years of your life are ahead of you. Um, Melody's website is melodylong.com. If you're listening to this, I will spell that for you. It's M like Melody, E L. O D like David, Y L O N like Nancy G.com. She has a Facebook group called Divorced Bold Women Finding Magic and Purpose. And that Facebook group um, can be found using the uh, normal Facebook group forward slash groups forward slash divorced bold women. Um, today, I'm going to be talking with Melody about the coexistence of joy, pain, and truth. And thank you, Melody, for being here. Hello to you. Hello to the viewers. Hello to the listeners. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Delighted. I really enjoy your energy. I enjoy your enthusiasm to help women as my, I have the same enthusiasm and, um, and I love your coloring. I know I told you that before we started recording, but I'm just taken aback. I love the gold. I love the, the greens behind you. Are you really, we had this wonderful coaching session in our coaching cohort group about coloring and you clearly either didn't need the training or you got a lot out of it. <laughs> because look at me, I've got barren walls. I mean, I'm not doing the compare despair, but hello, you look gorgeous. <laughs> That's sweet of you. Yeah, I, um, I definitely, this is, I think the juxtaposition of joy and pain is something that um, many times in our lives we live with. And I think certainly this last year, all of us, whether we are going through divorce or not, have been uh, in that pot. And um, so my heart goes out to women who, whether you're in a marriage or not, but if a relationship is ending, especially around this end of the year when there's quote unquote a holiday season, if you're, you know, we're in the midst of Hanukkah right now, we have solstice coming up, we have Christmas coming up, we have Kwanzaa coming up. So however you might celebrate any of those, um, 
all of that is muted right now because of COVID, but it's probably particularly challenging for you if you are in the midst of a relationship breakup mm -hmm. and probably feeling a fair amount of aloneness. Um, you know, your world has been topsy-turvy, turned upside down. So yeah, my, um, I, I, I have a lot of passion for wanting to let women know that there is a way through all of that and that they're not alone. I yeah. think it's particularly important to let women know they're not alone. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, and it's interesting, you work with women who are divorcing or who are building themselves after divorce. And I work mostly, it just has happened this way with single women who also are feeling lonely and stuck or unheard or self-critical and rebuilding themselves, yeah. you know? And so being able to identify what hurts and embrace it, acknowledge it, work through it, but also the hard pieces have been to acknowledge what's working, what feels good, because some don't feel they're worthy of having this good feeling or with this good feeling, the shoe's gonna drop and it's gonna be over. I can't enjoy because something's gonna come away and take it away, which is similar to what COVID has done for a lot of people, people going to work. And maybe we had some wishes that we probably shouldn't have wished, which is I wish I didn't have to go to work anymore. Well, guess what? COVID came and now we don't have to go to work. But I mean, there's a gift in every challenge and there's a challenge with every gift. Yes. And so what I know that you and I both do is help women. We've learned how to do this ourselves through help, not, not all by ourselves. Um, and, and then that's a big piece, I think, and, and is, is con building connection and building community. Um, but I think that what you and I both know is that there's an inside out repair, right? That, that receiving external forces um, is one thing, ex receiving external support is actually more important than external forces of gratitude or external forces of validation, that building ourselves from the inside out, we are more likely to start to embrace, enjoy, acknowledge that joy can be a part of our lives because we are worth every piece of it. Right. And I think, um, you know, um, I think a lot of us feel that we're in this worldwide shift. We're moving out of a, um, a power over a dominator a culture that we've been in for thousands of years <clears throat> that has never really acknowledged um, the power and the um, the depth and the usefulness of the yin the nurturing the feminine qualities and we all have male and female qualities to us um, so i think we as women it is kind of in our culture and in our genes, in a sense of this sense of worthlessness. Yeah. And, on and on top of it, then if a relationship falls apart that you had built your life around, yes. um, it plays right into that. Um, so I uh, think, um, you know, there's, there's a lot that we can do as women supporting each other and moving into a different paradigm where we, it's a win-win paradigm, not a, a power over paradigm. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, well said, thank you. So I'm gonna ask you a few random questions and you know, you never have to answer anything you don't want to. That's the first rule right there. You can be as vulnerable as you wish. I have tissues, but I have a hard time passing them through the Zoom. Yes. So if you need one, Perfect. See, I got them to you so fast. Wasn't that amazing? Everybody's watching and listening going, how does she hand her those tissues? Um, and, and again, you know, this is, I, I like to create whatever space you need. So if you don't want to answer something, you feel you don't have to, I don't feel like I answer or ask things that dig too deep right now. This is just a nice little brief time together. Um, I, what I'm hoping is that what people will take away from this conversation is that it's normal to feel joy and pain, that it's normal to experience being alive and feeling, you know, this lug lagging, um, that life and death is, you know, also part of this process. Um, and that maybe we can offer some kind of tip that, that can help people maneuver through this time um, to, to embrace the coexistence 
but yet, and not, but I really don't like to use the word, but in this case to, to um, find a way to be willing to receive the joy and not sit too long in the pain. Mm -hmm. So question number one, I think this is an easy one, but you know, you get to be the judge of that. When you hear, let me say it differently. I'm going to ask you to say the word out loud. Please say the word joy out loud. Joy. Where does that land in your body? You can say in it my, again if you need to. In my heart. In your in heart. My, yeah. And, and how did that feel when you said it? Um, alive, uh, hopeful, um, playful, little kiddish kind of energy, you know. I just came from being with my grandkids and they're just, they, kids know that have not had a very rough time, no joy, just, it just is who they are. And so all I have to do is think about my two and a half year old grandson, who's just this bubbly little guy mm -hmm. full of joy. So I, that's what I think of when I think of joy. Yeah. yeah and you naturally had a smile on your face. When yeah. you go back and watch the recording, you can see. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Say this word out loud. Pain. Pain. Where did that land? It's in my gut, my solar plexus. Mm -hmm. And so go ahead and say it again and tell me more about it, what that feels like. Pain. Well, um, it has, um, it could be physical pain. I think that um, my experience of being a nurse for a long time, I won't say how many years, but many years, <laughs> um, I've been around people in a lot of pain. And, but what I also know is that emotional pain, if we don't work with ourselves, can become physical pain. Yeah. So, when I say the word pain, I can think of women having challenging times, uh, financial challenging times, maybe being a single mom with young kids having a hard time right now, juggling, trying to school them and keep a roof over your head and cooking and, you know, all the things that one does to care for people. So that kind of pain, um, but also physical pain because I spend a good portion of my life in a hospital and I'm around very sick people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when you, and it's interesting because also when you said the word pain, it was almost like there was this grimace or this, this, um, I forgot the word already, but I noticed it when you said the word, um, Oh, like a ping, ping, you know, like the, like it, it ping, ping, I can't, it's, you know what I'm talking about? P-A-N-G, I think is the way. Yeah. Like I, that's what happened when I heard you say the word, I felt like something kind of hit you. And um, what I like to, so, okay, we'll come back to that. I'm going to come back to that. Have you in your life felt that joy was a relatively easy thing for you to feel, or did you have to create it for yourself did you, did you feel like it was innate like it was natural kind of like these two and a half year olds who didn't have you know or did you feel like you had to develop it create it build it yourself well it's been different in different phases in my life mm -hmm. um when i was younger no i think it came pretty naturally i can remember being uh you know like a young teenager and getting on my bike and in the Bay Area and riding, it wasn't real built up then and riding out into the country and being gone all day, just on, at the river collecting rocks and, you know, just being in bliss. Mm -hmm. um, as I got older, um, into my 20s and 30s, no, I had to really, those were challenging years for me and, um, and even beyond that. There have been times I have had to um, look more for it, but I've also been um, trained in uh, by a, a very um, wise and awake meditation teacher for many years 
about the polarity, the duality in our world that we, this third dimension that we live in is full of contrast. Mm -hmm. And every thing that we experience has an opposite to it. Pain and joy can be opposites, flip, you know, flip sides of the same coin. Mm -hmm. So um, as I've gotten older, I, my meditation practice has certainly been absolutely crucial yeah. to me. Um, being able to stay centered and grounded and um, not sway so much with the, the winds of the politics in our country and the, um, the angst yeah. and the, the pain that we see culturally around us. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a lot. And, and it sounds like, so, so, it, so there's really been this, um, um, kind of ebbing and flowing yes. of that joy coming into your life and being able to, um, to go with it, but also to, to have to work for it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Less and less having to work with it as I've, I'd say, you know, in the last 20 years, but there was a period. Yeah. For a 20 years where it was more challenging. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It was interesting. I, I taught probably, I taught one of my very first classes on this subject in the spring and I, I wasn't thinking I've done a lot of healing and I wasn't thinking when I set up this course and I asked people, why did they choose to take this course? It was called, um, embracing, uh, Creating, Embracing, and Maintaining Joy. That's the name of this class that I taught. And I really thought I knew what they were going to say. And I realized how out of touch I was with a lot of my pain. Because oh, I found yeah. a, lot of, a lot of healing. Not out of touch because I'm denying it, but I've come through right. the other side of most of it. There's still some healing to do. I am not perfect. <laughs> um, but there were a couple people in the class that said they took the class because they were afraid of joy oh. because so many times in their life, it had been stripped away. Dashed. Mm -hmm. You know, they had this really amazing experience and the very next hour, something just goes bam. And so they wanted to stop being afraid of it. Mm. Wonderful. And they wanted to stop running away from it how courageous yeah and I was like really I was like wow I'm so honored you chose my class to start really? you know because it woke me up it reminded me that I also had this stigma that if I was feeling joy damn well better not try to hang on to it because uh -huh. it was gonna get taken or something bad was gonna happen um and so what would you say to these women who are going through divorce, who've been really uncomfortable for so many years or however long it's been that that's there yeah. and they really can have joy too. Right. Well, I think the, like what you've said, I think it's really important that we acknowledge our feelings and we, we honor and respect where we're at in the moment that's crucial and get whatever support and help you need to um to to deal with that but I, there are certainly techniques um to work with the emotions and that's um something that i um enjoy doing with people um but i think that what i would say to women is that this too will pass it will pass it feels like excuse my french it feels like shit when you're in the middle of it it feels awful um but and on you know unfortunately there's lots of us around who have been through what you're going through and we're unfortunately and fortunately and fortunately so right. there's right Fortunately and fortunately. And you have a community and you're There's not unique and you're not alone. You're not alone. And that's 
I think very important. I think the um, it certainly was for me going through my divorce just to have a couple of women who were had young kids like I did that it was it saved my bacon mm -hmm. just to have that social contact that was normal. We'd have meals together or do activities together and we could visit. And it wasn't like it was a bitch sesh fest for us, but it was just camaraderie with other women who knew when you said you were going through something, they understood. You didn't have to really explain it to them. Yeah. What I say to women right now who are in this really hard place is one, it doesn't last forever. Mm -hmm. Two, please don't stuff your feelings and try to act like you're all happy and the world's great because that's not honest. You don't, you don't want to be inauthentic. Mm -hmm. There may be times with your work or whatever's going on that you have to put on a mask and do what needs to be done. But I hope that you would be able to, in some part of your life, be able to be real and find someone that you could be real with. Yeah. Because I think that helps us move through the pain. Yeah. Just being able to share it, talk about it, journal about it, um, take a tennis ball, a tennis racket to a bed, you know, when nobody's home, whatever you have to do to kind of work through your emotions and to know that there's lots of support for you if if you're you know and i think that's i didn't have that when i went through my divorce i would love to have had a mentor or a guide um to help me through it and that's what i hope to be able to help women with mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i think that the 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 more fluid you can be knowing that these this anger, this rage, this depression, whatever it is you're feeling that you quote unquote call pain and bad. Um, it's not who you are at your core. Right. Our emotions are not who we are. They're like a river that flows through us. Right. And joy and happiness and peace and calmness will also flow through you and be be with you. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's really important. You know, one of the things that I've I've learned is that, you know, as we think, okay, joy is going to get taken from us or stripped away, it's temporary. Well, guess what? Pain is too. Pain can be stripped away. Pain can be temporary. You know, it almost always is. You know, I I'm I'm an advocate towards um, being authentic and open and honest and and to not just leave the elephants in the room. Um, they're they're great animals, but you know, we gotta, <laughs> they they have a place they need to go. So we got to talk about them and let them out <laughs> and roam free. Um, but what what I'm really knowing now, and especially in thinking about mental illness, is that we we can look at um, all the lives, all the friends, people we've lost due to suicide, and that is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. I suffer from mental illness. I've had lots of times of depression, suicidal ideation, not more recently, but I, I walk, I'm walking through, I'm walking through to the light, you know, and I think that it's really, really critical that we name things. Yes. Like you said, talk about it, find someone that is safe to talk about it with, whether it's a coach, a therapist, a doctor, um, and, and not to walk around with this, um, uh, not the COVID mask, but the theatrical mask of everything's okay, especially for those of us that have children. My children were young when I th went through my divorce and I couldn't pretend for the life of me, but I also didn't need to share everything with my kids and bring them in and have them feel the crap, right? So I had other people that I could talk to and work through things and still be a loving and present mom. Um, and because I was becoming more present for myself, not abandoning myself. Right. right. So, think, yeah, go ahead. And I think that um, this notion of being afraid of joy because you've had experiences where things have, have fallen apart very quickly for you um, is a hard one. But I think there are ways to process that. Yes. And and, um, and one of the ways is to learn more kind of mindfulness kinds of techniques that just keep us in the moment mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, 
this moment right now is all I have. I think I'm going to make it home for dinner tonight. I think I'm going to, you know, see my daughter and son-in-law tomorrow. Maybe, maybe not. I, you know, life is, uh, is a, a unknown. That part of it's unknown. So to, as much as we can stay in the moment mm -hmm. and learn to be in our pain in the moment, feel it fully, express it as much as we can, and then enjoy those moments when we're in joy, when we're in happiness. Absolutely. When we're feeling like the sun is out and the sky is blue and birds are singing and things are good. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's really key. And, and I think we'll, we'll close with that idea. The notion is that when you feel the pain, don't reject it. Don't ignore it. Don't deny it. Let it be there. Talk about it. Get it out. And when you're feeling joy, let it be there. Talk it out. Enjoy it. You know, really embrace it because the more we squish them, the, the worse things are. We don't, the, the pain doesn't go away. The joy doesn't get felt. And so there is the, the coexistence has to happen, in my opinion, my humble opinion, you know, that, that, that we have to allow this coexistence for us to really be full, present human beings, women. And I think it's a skill. I don't think it comes easily. I think oh. it's something that, that with life experience, um, you're more able to hold both, both and um, correct. So, if you're not in that place right now, don't beat yourself up. Right. Um, you know, Misha and I have spent years um, getting to the place where we could do that. So if this, these are new concepts to you, please don't feel like you've got to have it by next week or something's wrong with you at all. Oh, no, I was thinking they had to have it by tomorrow. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. no. And, and that's a really good point, too. I'm really, really, really glad that you said that. I don't know if I can emphasize that enough. I'm really glad you said that because, you know, I think there may be some women listening saying, well, I've been working a lot of my life, too, on this. Why don't I feel the way you two feel? And you know what? It's all about... Um, I'm very spiritual, so I use the word divine timing, but it's I don't I'm not using it in this form of a, a god per se. There, there for me is a universal timing. There's a mother nature pattern, and so there is a reason we walk through the things we walk through when we walk through them. And so for all the women listening, all the other listeners on my YouTube and everywhere else, we we have to go through what we're going through. So. Melody doesn't, isn't, isn't void of, of challenges. Misha's not void of challenges, but we've built up practices that we use every day that we help our clients begin to create and use every day to get to this place of coexistence, of holding that pain and holding that joy and being able to live with both of them. I may have misspoken for you. I, I, I'm pretty sure this is what you do with your women. We've talked several times before, but yeah. So, so I know that you have a, a handout or a gift that you wanted to, to offer. Um, you want to explain that to everyone? It's um, called Affirmation for the Divorced Woman's Soul. And there, I don't, I didn't count them. I maybe about 20 um, affirmations to um, perhaps lighten you up a little bit and maybe even write out on a three by five card if one of them you know, rings really true for you to um, hang on to when their times are a little more challenging. Wonderful. And so I put that link to, um, it's a PDF. I put that link in the Facebook post. I will also add it to the Podbean channel and the YouTube. Um, and you will provide your email information, but you can unsubscribe to emails anytime, but I have a feeling you'll really find a lot of value in emails coming from Melody. Um, so yeah, I just, I just uh, hope that if you are a woman in this group or anywhere listening to my videos or podcasts that you, um, you know, seek support, especially during this holiday season. Um, I think that uh, one of the things that I've learned, I've rebudgeted my entire budget over the last few years to really um, prioritize comfort and fun. And comfort doesn't mean I'm getting a yacht. Comfort doesn't mean I'm staying in five-star hotels. It means that I get shoes that help my back. It means that I seek um, work with a naturopath. I have a coach, things that are really investing in my well-being 
and fun, you know, being able to play, buy a new board game or go out to, you know, we can't go to a movie right now, but um, so I've reworked my budget to include those things. And I, I really highly encourage people as a, put a stake in the ground for your own health and contact Misha, contact Melody, contact, I guess I'm Misha, contact me, contact Melody. You know, you've got, um, it takes a village. And I think um, we're all here to support one another, get through this Absolutely. incredibly beautiful and challenging life. Right. So, right. yeah. Anything you would like to say to the listeners or viewers? Well, the last thing I just like to say is if you are in the middle of um, a relationship breakup, I just really, um, want to encourage you to remember that you're not alone, that it can feel lonely, but you aren't alone. And if there are, even despite the fact that we can't gather as much as um, we have been in the past, there are ways in your community that you can find others if you do not have friends or family that you feel like you can reach out to. And I certainly would encourage you to do that. I think that connection and um, being with um, like-minded souls is so helpful going through challenging times. Absolutely, well said. And I'd love to have you if you you know if you felt like it, wanted to join my Facebook group where we offer inspiration and support for women who are going through that kind of a process. Wonderful. Yes, I'm glad you mentioned that again. I almost forgot. So wonderful. Yes, please, please, please you know, take a moment to think about what your well-being needs right now. And I can tell you support is usually at the top of the list, even though it's the first thing we reject because we might feel we're a burden. Um, but these Facebook groups are a fantastic support um, for women of all backgrounds right now. Yeah. Absolutely. I, it really has blossomed this last year. And I think um, I'm in just running it myself. I'm just having fun with mm -hmm. it. And, and so, um, yeah, I would encourage you to reach out to Misha be and join her group if you're not already in it. And if it, um, there's some appeal to me, absolutely join my group too, yeah. Yeah, thank you, thank you. So thank you to Melody Long for being my guest for today, podcast number 21, uh, Passing Joy Around the World, but also Coexistence, Joy, Pain and Truth. And um, thank you to the listeners and viewers. Um, looking forward to our next week's guest. I won't give that away yet because I don't have it in front of me. So I can't tell you who it is, <laughs> but I'm delighted whoever it is. Um, and then um, please, uh, yeah, tune in next time. Thursday is typically 3 p.m. Eastern, but sometimes we change it around. And I feel like there was one more thing I was gonna tell everybody. Well, I guess that's it. Make it a beautiful day. May we all have many marvelous moments throughout. And um, yeah, we'll say goodbye to everybody. Bye.